Okay, I wanted to get you a model that you can use in Chapter 3 for how to go about describing the stages of the instructional design model that you used. And um, regardless of who I ask to give me advice on which ones to look at in the um, digital repository that essentially accomplish the things that I've been asked, uh, the standard that I've been asked to hold for you. Um, whenever I review those, they tend not to uh, match up with that standard, so I've been forced to go outside of that. And um, this will give you a good sense of what I'm looking for, although it's not kind of the same model. So um, you'll see that I've got this linked into, um, it's linked into the a Canvas account for you. It'll be under week eight. Um, if you're looking at it there. Essentially what it is, is it's an article by a couple of students. One was a PhD student, the other was a master's student, that focuses specifically upon um, the... Uh, essentially they're evaluating the different phases of ADDI that they went through when they completed their instructional design project as part of a first semester master's course. So the course itself is is Edit uh, 6170, which is an introduction to instructional design. As a part of that course, students are required to undertake a project that uses the 21 steps under each of the five phases of ADDI. And what you'll see here as you look through this particular item um, is they go through and they sort of describe what it was that they were doing. Now, in the case of this particular one, um, they're not actually describing the steps that they undertook. They are specifically looking at essentially whether or not the individual phases of um, Addy um, are, first of all, if their team actually followed them correctly as prescribed by the literature that's out there. Um, they also look at essentially were any other models of instructional design used or applied while they were doing that particular activity. And then they're uh, looking at essentially the process of actually doing this instructional design project, um, very similar to the types of ones that you guys are doing. Um, were there any specific challenges that arose by having to do a real world project? So to give you a sense, the project itself, as you can see, and they describe it here, um, was done back in 2009. It was a team of four students. And as you can see, there's one undergraduate, one master's student, and two doctoral students that were involved in it. And again, while there are two doctoral students there, um, again, I'll stress the fact that this was a first semester, first year master's course that they were taking. Uh, many of the doc students take it because while they have a master's degree in something, it's oftentimes not instructional design or not instructional technology. So their faculty require them to take the first year master's course as a, a background. So um, the master students that you're looking at here are essentially, or the master student you're looking at here, is essentially where you were back in September, uh, back in August when you first started this program. Obviously the undergraduate program, or the undergraduate student, is basically somebody who um, you know, doesn't even have a bachelor's yet, uh, so they don't have a teaching credential, they don't have anything. The two doctoral students essentially are where you will be come August of this year. So essentially they've done their master's, they have completed um, a project or a thesis as a capstone for that particular master's project, and then they are starting oftentimes the very next semester. Um, so if you could imagine you being part of this team come the fall of 2017. That's kind of where those two doc students are. So they go through and they talk a little bit about the actual project that they did. And one of the things I want to stress with this project is sort of the scope of what it was they did. So this particular write-up that you're seeing here is a very, very brief summary to give you a sense this here was the project that I was involved in when I was uh, with this. And as you can see here, we had a team of six individuals. Uh, we had two doc students, three master students, 
um, sorry, two master's students and two undergraduates in my group. Um, and for Peter and I, and we're the two doc students there, again, this was our first semester doing this um, as a PhD student. So we had, again, where you guys would be come this fall. And to give you a sense as to the scope of the project, as you can see here, here's just the table of contents. And you can see, you know, we have got the the, you know, the main areas, you'll notice we didn't have to do an evaluation uh, when we did the course. We just had to plan the evaluation when we did it. Um, essentially, it was decided that there wasn't enough time to do the kind of evaluation that uh, they were asking. But, you know, look through sort of the length that we were looking at here. So, um, you know, the purpose statement, uh, defining the gap, purpose statement, instructional goals, all roughly fitting on a single page. The learner analysis is two pages. You know, the resource analysis is another page. The probable delivery systems is another two pages before you get to the estimated costs. As you can see here, the performance objectives and teaching strategies, three pages. So the actual report that we have, and You'll note that there are no page numbers for the table of, or for the appendices, but the stages of ADDIE that we went through, and you can see ones that you're familiar with, you know, formative evaluation, pilot testing, the student preparation plan, the, the essentially the, the um, teacher preparation plan, um, you know, these kinds of things, the different evaluations in here, the different levels of evaluation uh, that you saw in the ADDIE model. Um, things I'm only asking you guys to write a paragraph on. You can see for us, many of these things, um, you know, were a full page for sure. Uh, many of them multiple pages to the point that the actual document itself ends up being 104 pages when you factor in the appendices. Although, as you can see, if it's 104 and the appendices start on 63, there's about 40 pages of appendices. But even then, you're still looking at 60 pages of um, you know, of describing the ADDIE process. And I, I show you that just so that you can understand that what you see here in this example that I've posted in Canvas for you, while they're only taking a paragraph or two to describe each of the phases, what those four students actually did in this was they actually produced, and in their case, I, I know Tanya, so I've asked her about this, um, they produced a, a document that was approximately 200 pages. Uh, that they used here. But having said that, I think it is a good guide. So as you're looking at each of the stages, and it's really here on page four that you want to sort of start off looking at this. Um, so what you want to look at, and, and in this one, for example, they're talking about analysis. So they start off with the performance analysis. And the first thing is just basically background literature that kind of stuff, that really isn't of interest to you in terms of an example. But when you start here in this next paragraph, in terms of the instructional needs of the center, this is where they actually start to describe what it is that they did. Now they're trying to combine all of the steps that they took during the analysis phase into one discussion. And as you can see here, essentially what they've got is one kind of big long paragraph for performance analysis that um, looking at it, it looks like it takes up three pages but it, or two pages, but if you remove the pictures it actually um, works out to about three quarters of a page and then they've got some visuals that they included in there. But when you're looking at the text, the types of things that they're describing in the text, you know, the project team did this, and then we recommended that, and then we looked at this, and, um, you know, continuously referred to the, these are the types of things that you want to include in yours. And again, you can see in the case of analysis, they've done a couple of steps in here. So in their learner analysis, again, this first paragraph here is irrelevant to you guys. You don't have to worry about that because they're just providing essentially this is the um, answering their first question um, in terms of what they're looking at here. But when you're looking at this second paragraph here, and then they go with the figure, again, this is the paragraph that's describing their learner analysis. Um, and you can see that Here's the rest of that particular paragraph. And then they come up with a paragraph that, um, you know, describes their purpose. And much of this paragraph again, um, so really up until 
you get to about right there. So all of that, the first one, two, uh, three, four, five sentences um, are the background. They're answering their first research question there. But starting here with keeping these guidelines in mind, the project team recommended the following purpose and then establish these particular instructional goals. That's again, they're describing steps that they took in here. Um, you know, and, and again, looking at this particular one, while I would not expect you to have the citations that they've got in there, you can see that they're essentially going through, and this paragraph here, minus the citations, are essentially talking about each of these instructional goals. In your case, you wrote objectives, their project objectives that you wanted to accomplish. Um, you know, and they've basically written a little paragraph here that talks about you know where those objectives came from. In their case, where their goals came from. Um, you know, moving into the design section, you'll notice what they've started to do here now is instead of breaking it up into individual pieces. Um, they've gone through and just had sort of one or two paragraphs about each. So again, the first paragraph that they've got in design is addressing their first research question about essentially looking at the literature to support that step. So for your purposes, um, what you're looking at is it's this paragraph here, so starting with this one, where they're essentially describing the various steps that they took when they went through the design process. Now again, they're summarizing here a much larger document similar to that one I showed you earlier. So in your case, you would not be writing a paragraph or two about analysis, a paragraph or two about design. You would be writing a paragraph about each of the steps under analysis and each of the steps under design or if you're using one of the other models what other steps they have so um, you know to use the dick carry and carry which is one of the sort of most uh, famous ones most common instructional design methods if I remember off the top of my head it has seven or eight steps so in theory you would have seven or eight steps that you would talk about in a paragraph or so um, but you can sort of see here as they go through and they describe each of those. So what you're seeing with most of these sections are, and you can see the same thing with the development. Um, it's either the first paragraph or the first part of the paragraph um, where they go through and they um, talk about stuff that we're not too worried about. And then either in the second paragraph or the second part of the first paragraph as you can see here that's where they start to give you what I would suggest is an example that you could use and then that continues up until you get to the evaluating the whatever phase they happen to be and that's where they're again getting back to that third question that they're looking at um, so again looking at the implementation here um, as you can see they've got you know a little bit of uh, stuff up front but when you get to this as requested that's where they actually start to go through and summarize what they did and that kind of that level of information is about the amount that I would expect and that level of detail is kind of what I would expect for you for each of your individual steps um, so again looking at the evaluation um, you know it starts right here in the case of the nature center and you know here's essentially that and then they actually sorry this is by the case study so it's really um, again when they're describing their evaluation this is what they're talking about here this is the the level and you'll note that um, compared to the others they've got a uh, an APA error that is sneaked in here you notice they've got the initials for the two Kirkpatrick's here um, you know, which isn't something that they should have, and you can see up here with Gagne, they don't have the initials. Um, as you can tell, this particular journal is not using APA strictly, because you can see some of the, excuse me, some of the differences that you would find in APA. So, for example, that should be if it was APA, comma, space, P, period, three uh, forty-six, as opposed to the model that they're using there. Um, that would be something specific to the journal. So. Hopefully this gives you at least some sense as to um, 
an example of how to describe those. Um, probably the best ones, I think, for your purposes, uh, looking at it. Uh, the ones that they describe up here in the analysis, I think, are quite good. And the reason I suggest that is because in the case of the analysis, for the most part, they've actually broken down some of the steps. So instead of with the design and the development and the implementation and evaluation where they're talking about all of the steps for that phase usually at once, here with the analysis you see they actually talk about the um, performance analysis and then they talk about the learner analysis and then they talk about the training purpose all as separate things so you get a better sense as to what a paragraph or so might look like for um, you know some of the individual steps underneath Addy if you choose to use Addy or um, the individual steps with whichever instructional design model that you happen to use so um, hopefully that'll give you some sense as to um, you know, a model that you can use as you're looking to work your way through Chapter 3. Uh, for those of you that are using the uh, project model, the design project model, as opposed to the thesis model.